Angelica Morris. I'm chair of the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission and thank you for tuning in with one-on-one -on -one with the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission. And with me I have our LGBT committee chair Chad Putnam. Thank you for coming Chad. Yeah absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Sure. And uh, just in our past recent couple weeks uh, on April 21st we had our first annual community pride walk in partnership with Union College. And uh, so Chad, tell us a little about the walk. I know it was very successful. We're getting a lot of community feedback. We had a lot of uh, our elected officials there. Our mayor was mm -hmm. there and Congressman Paul Tonko and our county legislators was there. But tell us a little about uh, the background of the planning of and how, how it was formed yeah. um, with uh, Union College and the mm -hmm. LGBT committee with the commission. Yeah, so the, uh, the, the first ever LGBT uh, community pride walk really uh, was the outcome. Uh, so the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender uh, pride walk uh, that we hosted on the 21st at Union College was the outcome of uh, the committee really coming together. Um, and the committee uh, really consists of community activists, uh, mm -hmm. members of organizations that are LGBT specific or inclusive, mm -hmm. uh, members of the LGBT community, or allies out there who really felt that uh, as the uh, LGBT committee of the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission we wanted to create an opportunity to reach out uh, to the community and have an event in the community right. where folks could come and, and interact with us learn more about the work that we're trying to do uh, so that we could also hear from them about some of the work that they might like to see us do um, so the walk the very successful walk actually was the outcome of, of a group effort. Um, the, the committee consists of anywhere from six to eight to ten people at, at any one given time, uh, different folks taking on different mm -hmm. responsibilities. Uh, soon uh, in the planning phases of the walk, uh, we reached out to Union College okay. and uh, they yeah. embraced the idea and welcomed us to, uh, to participate and to be part of uh, this event. So uh, we worked with them and uh, came up with a date and a time and really began to reach out to some other community uh, partners to solicit donations and, and whatnot uh, for folks that were going to be in attendance. And then we, you know, as you know, right. we worked with the, the, the county representative mm -hmm. uh, to begin the marketing right. component and, and get it out on Facebook right. and, and on the internet site and, and all the publications approved and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, at the end of the day, it was, it was truly a success and we were grateful to be part of it. We had anywhere from 70 to 80 participants on hand. Uh, the weather held out for us. Yeah, it was supposed to be a rainy good. day, uh, but it really held out. <laughs> it was a beautiful, right, sun, yeah. sunny uh, morning. And uh, so, like I said, we had around 70 or 80 folks participate. It was scheduled to be a two mile walk, uh, basically going around Union Campus up around Wendell Avenue, uh, past the First Unitarian Church in Schenectady, uh, which was a watering station for us, which was great. And uh, then back onto campus. And uh, before the walk kicked off, uh, we were fortunate to have a number of elected officials mm -hmm. on hand. Yes, that um, was a good showing, wasn't it? It was, we yes, it really showing. was. Uh, to have the mayor there with us, uh, uh, Mayor uh, Gary McCarthy on hand to, to support our efforts, as well as City Council Member Lisa Perrazzo, um, uh, Congressman Paul Tonka was there and really made some really uh, nice and thoughtful comments as well as uh, a couple uh, elected or um, county legislators mm -hmm. uh, on hand, uh, Gary Hughes and uh, Karen Johnson, Karen Johnson yeah. was with us Those as are, well. Yeah, they supported us. Yeah, and uh, you know our allies at Union College, uh, both Jason and Lorraine, uh, really fantastic uh, partners in the development of this community mm -hmm. walk. And um, uh, before things wrapped up and we actually did the walk, the Union College president uh, was there to greet us as yeah, well. Yeah, he and was. A, he paid us a nice surprise. He did. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, and they really appreciated the opportunity to interact with the community. Mm -hmm. And I think specifically around 
this this topic, you know, uh, the, the the fight for the gay rights movement, which has really been in existence for for several decades, right. um, and much progress has been done. Um, it's a really important movement and an important time to continue the momentum. And and I think that this this walk really did that. It allowed the the committee and the commission to really engage with the community right. around LGBT mm -hmm. equality issues, both to celebrate the progress that we've had, um, but also to acknowledge the work that still has yet to be done. Right. And, you know, as both we, we know, because we're uh, commissioners on the commission, right. but the, the community probably may not know that sure. uh, within the New York State human rights laws, um, sexual orientation is, is a protected class. Right. Um, not only sexual orientation, but sex, race, creed, ethnicity, nationality, and also religious. Right. Um, religious uh, denominations and organizations and also religion. So going back to the sexual orientation, can you talk about a little bit of the sexual orientation protected class and also mm -hmm. as we on the commission passed back in March a resolution to support called the Gender Act right. and that act um, basically is adding transgender people into mm -hmm. the protected class. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So a little bit uh, before we had a chance to talk today, I did a little research and about a decade ago, um, in 2002, the okay. New York State Legislature as well as the governor uh, passed into law sexual orientation to be a protected class uh, within the human rights law. Uh, so as you had said, there's a number of protected classes uh, within the New York State human rights law mm -hmm. and Schenectady County is subject to those New York State human rights protection classes um, and as I had said and as you had said uh, sexual orientation is something that's been on the books uh, so to speak uh, for for over a decade or just roughly about a decade and really what that means as as an openly gay individual myself um, I can I can be on public television I can be on Facebook I can I can openly acknowledge uh, for example uh, today my partner and I celebrate eight years together oh, and wow. I can and I can celebrate that publicly without fear of uh, d discrimination or the loss of employment or uh, medical care or housing um, because it's New York State law that I can't be discriminated against based on my sexual orientation. Um, so I can be out and I can be proud, right, without fear of rejection or discrimination in the community. And that's been true for, for nearly a decade now. Um, unfortunately, our transgender brothers and sisters, uh, for the most part, aren't uh, so fortunate, really. Um, for the Gender Expression Non-Discrimination Act is, is what you were referring to. Uh, basically what that would do is so uh, oftentimes the transgender community so we have the lesbian the gay the bisexual and the transgender community and I think that oftentimes the community doesn't quite as much understand uh, the perspective of the transgender individual and uh, uh, you know kind of the long and short of it is that um, if somebody was born a particular gender say I was I, I was born male right um, I identify as male, but for example, uh, our trans transgender community members uh, w were born, for example, male, but identify with the opposite sex mm -hmm. or the opposite gender, so they identify as female. And so as they begun to kind of evaluate their life process and who they are and who they want right. to be as they grow and mature, they recognize that that's not their true gender or gender expression. Mm -hmm. And and it takes an incredible amount of care, courage. I mean, just think about, sure. you know, what it takes to get dressed and go out, you know, mm -hmm. on a given day and the courage it takes for any human being um, to go out and engage with the community. But now try and change the way you present your gender in our culture um, and, and what kind of uh, response you may get. And so it, I, I have great respect for our transgender community because of the courage that it takes for them to go out and, and express a gender that isn't their assigned or identified um, gender. Um, you know, so uh, gender expression non-discrimination law basically would protect those individuals. Okay. So just as I can celebrate my sexual orientation and the fact that I'm in a same-sex loving mm -hmm. relationship, uh, a transgender person can celebrate their, their gender identity and expression without fear of being discriminated against both in housing public accommodations, medical care, things like that. Now, 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 do you feel that here in Schenectady County, the issues 
of the LGBT, such as transgender issues, um, such as the other issues that the LGBT community may be facing mm -hmm. that is not really being public um, as other um, <clears throat> classes within the human rights law, uh, such as like um, people who are of other races. They may feel that they're being discriminated based on you know, at work or other places. Do you feel that the LGBT commu uh, community is feeling these issues and but because of the nature mm -hmm. of the controversial issue because of lesbian gays? Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is some type of importance that the commission needs to address um, within this community? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I think that, you know, when we look at the mission um, and the objectives of the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission, right, and, right. and the, the goals that the LGBT committee has taken on, as, we've, as I've, I've been chair uh, now of the committee for just about a year, or just actually over a year, and we've begun to engage in the community and have conversations, I think, you know, when we, uh, one of our mission statements is to look for areas of tension. And I think there, there's, there's certainly uh, tension uh, within the community as a whole as we look at various religious beliefs and practices right. and the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. And I think that that was very apparent uh, when uh, marriage equality passed in New York State. And uh, they went to the extent of uh, putting in religious uh, exemptions into the law so that if, as a, if a particular religion or a spiritual denomination didn't uh, feel that uh, same-sex marriage aligned with their beliefs or practices, that they could choose not to, uh, to participate in those types of ceremonies. And as I've reached out to folks in the community and kind of you know, try and have my pulse on where the tensions exist, I, you know, I think that moving forward, I think exploring an opportunity to have a forum, a discussion with regards to the balance of religion and spirituality and the lesbian, the gay, the bisexual and transgender community because I think that there's a great deal of tension uh, that exists there, but not entirely. As I had mentioned, you know, the walk, one of the things, why, one of the reasons why I wanted to mention the First Unitarian Church in Schenectady is because they were a watering station for us. Um, they had a rainbow flag out that day. Um, they do a number of events at the church uh, where they, uh, you know, openly embrace and support the LGBT community. Um, but I also respect and appreciate, and being a commissioner, understand that there's uh, uh, different religious beliefs and practices where people um, just feel differently, whether it's about marriage equality or gender expression. Um, and, you know, as we know in the commission, they're ent completely entitled uh, right. to their own religious beliefs right. and practices. But uh, part of our responsibility is to identify where those tensions exist and see, you know, where we can create opportunity for discussion right. uh, so that we can kind of cohabitate in peace. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely, and that's, and that's the role for the commission. Right. Um, the role of the commission is to educate, inform, and make awareness to the community about the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission and what we do and what's in the New York State um, human rights and civil rights law. Mm -hmm. And as you know, one of our mandates is to foster mutual respect amongst our community residents. Not only that, is to hold and host public mm -hmm. forums mm -hmm. and town halls mm -hmm. to address the relevant issues of our community. Right. And as we know, last year <laughs> we had a controversial issue with the sure. I Am Gay um, billboards. Mm -hmm. And those billboards did bring, um, did bring, shed some light on the city and the county mm -hmm. on the LGBT issues mm -hmm. of the day. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen, there was tensions between the uh, religious community and the LGBT community. However, the commission was there to hold a public forum right. to hear what the, um, other organizations had to say regarding LGBT mm -hmm. issues. And as we know, um, Inner Armed Voices mm -hmm. was the one that had the billboards up. And we invited um, the ACL, IOU. Yeah, I believe, um, yeah. ACL. Yes, we invited them. And we invited some other organizations that talked mm -hmm. about freedom of choice, freedom right. of speech, 
um, regarding LGBT. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, the commission is, has, we have to address these issues, regardless of our personal beliefs of how we feel as a person, but as a commissioner, we have to um, fulfill the mission that we were appointed to do. Right. So um, now you were saying that you're with the Rainbow Access Initiative, is that, that's, that's the organization that you work with um, off during the, during the day, correct? Yeah, well, okay. I, I have actually many hats that I wear. <laughs> okay. Um, but I am um, I'm a social worker. Um, oh, I'm a social yeah. worker, and uh, aside from my day job, I'm the uh, board president for an organization called Rainbow Access Initiative. Okay. And uh, Rainbow Access Initiative is actually located here in uh, Schenectady up on Union Street. Oh, wow. Uh, we okay. rent some space uh, from a is, local husband and wife psychologist okay. team. Is there a website or, or yeah, phone so, number you could address the, yeah. community, the community? And just in case uh, someone out there um, is LGBT and they want to go and find some help assistance right. or if you have an address or phone mm -hmm. number or website that you can... Yeah, uh, sure. Thank you. Um, so Rainbow Access Initiative uh, can be found at www.rainbowaccess.org uh, or you can find us on Facebook at Rainbow Access Initiative and we also have a blog uh, oh, where really? we try and keep some updated <laughs> events and things like that. So uh, you're a blogger? We're a blo I'm a blogger, we're a blogger <laughs> okay. and we do that at www.rai-health. Dot org, um, and you can find that blog by going to our homepage, which is at rainbowaccess.org. Um, you know, just a little bit more background with regards to um, uh, Rainbow Access Initiative. Our mission is really to ensure the LGBT, the lesbian, the gay, bisexual, and transgender community mm -hmm. has access to culturally competent and compassionate healthcare and human services mm -hmm. in the capital district. And, uh, you know, the organization was found uh, back in 2003 and really focused on training healthcare providers about the needs uh, and issues that are faced by the LGBT community. And it really ties into the work that, you know, we're trying to do with regards to the Human Rights Commission. And uh, when we are, you know, there's, there's, there's plenty of evidence out there to show that when an individual or for, when a class is protected, has basic human right protections, um, that that person's health and wellness uh, it can improve exponentially, right? Mm -hmm. So as uh, sexual orientation became on the books um, and folks were now prevent, uh, uh, protected, okay. right, from discrimination right. based on sexual orientation, uh, that individual can now uh, feel free to maintain employment, have insurance, access mm -hmm. health care, without feeling like they're going to be discriminated against because of their sexual orientation. And as we talked about with gender identity, you know, for the, the transgender community is, is, ha, experiences higher incidences of depression, suicidal ideation, um, unemployment, and homelessness. And a lot of that has to do with the culture that they're trying to survive in, right? Imagine not being Those embraced. Those issues again were employment? Uh, there's a higher incidence of, of depression for oh, transgender wow. individuals. There's a higher incidence of suicidal ideation. So thoughts of wanting to, to take their own life or actual suicide attempts, uh, higher incidence of substance abuse, as well as homelessness and unemployment. Um, but ironically, transgender individuals tend to have higher levels of education uh, with regards to bachelor's and graduate level degrees, but they live in a culture that says that it's not okay for you to be you, right? right? So as the chair of the LGBT committee, you know, one of the things, you know, kind of guns blazing when I came in <laughs> to my first, right. my first commission yeah. meeting yeah. was Genda. What are we going to do about this? Right. Because it's not just LGB committee, it's the LGBT committee and the T is not silent. So we got to figure out what can we do to advocate for the transgender community? Because as, as we know, I mean, our, our, our flagship between below our, our, our county seal is that you know, with regards to the Human Rights Commission is protect the, in the respect the rights of all people. Right. It doesn't say accept transgender individuals, you know? So um, I think that, you know, as we do the work that we're trying to do with regards to the commission, uh, promoting and advocating for the passage of agenda in New York State is crucial. Um, I think until that happens, uh, these folks will continue to struggle um, and won't see improved health and wellness outcomes, um, you know, until, you know, they're they're given their due respect in our community. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Well, we did say this year that yeah. our big three words is partner, collaborate, and support. Right. So we've been doing all of that right. um, within the last, within this year. Right. Um, and it is true that we need to, again, fulfill the mission of the commission, and that is to protect and respect all rights. Right. It's rights of female, male, boy, girl, right. gender, age, sex, race, creed, ethnicity. Mm -hmm. You can't um, discriminate because you may be Italian mm -hmm. and I may be Irish. <laughs> right. Everybody's protected and we have to respect everybody's rights. Not only respect everybody's rights, but we have to respect everybody's personal feelings. Mm -hmm. um, but yet we have to uphold the mission that we are legislatively mandated by law. Mm -hmm. um, besides how we may feel personally, Right. We were appointed by the by the county legislature to fulfill this uh, mandate. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, let's talk about the commission a little bit. Sure. And sure. Because it coincides to the LGBT committee, mm -hmm. um, and so as you came on as you came on the commission, mm -hmm. why did you get involved with the commission, or how did you become interested? Because a lot of people don't know that, you know, we are here. Mm -hmm. And I've been on the commission for about seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, and when I got on the commission, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> um, and being on the commission, it, it was just a place where we just mm -hmm. met, and but we weren't active. Mm -hmm. But now that we've been active for the past year and a half or so, a lot of people mm -hmm. has been saying, wow, I didn't know the commission does that. Wow, mm -hmm. I didn't know the commission does public forums. I don't know the uh, the commission uh, investigate to lead to discrimination mm -hmm. either in the workplace or with my sex or even with my sexual orientation. I didn't know that the commission um, has a jail oversight committee that oversees mm -hmm. and works with the sheriff's department mm -hmm. and goes into the jails and talks to the inmates and mm -hmm. makes sure that their quality of life in the jail is um, <clears throat> is livable and also we go in and we do programs and GED and mm -hmm. re-entry stuff, um, workshops before they come back out. Right. So how did you get involved with the commission? So uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Stop question. <laughs> right, right. Well, I enjoy politics. Okay. Um, and I okay. enjoy that, uh, that, that, that we're a participatory, participatory government. Mm -hmm. Right, the fact that we get to go out and engage the community right. um, that individually, if I chose to run for office, that that is certainly something that I could do uh, and that would be supported by our government. And uh, so oftentimes I'm always kind of scanning the headlines and watching uh, to see who is running for uh, any particular office or what's happening locally in the political climate, but also nationally. Okay. And uh, a little, I guess it would be two years ago now, um, as you know, Susan Savage, who was the uh, Schenectady County Chair of okay. the Legislature, was running for the New York State Senate. Yes. And I was really intrigued by her announcement. And oh. so I reached out to her and I asked for an opportunity uh, to kind of support her, her campaign and the work that she was doing. And, uh, and uh, so I got involved with her campaign and, and ironically enough, uh, you know, my LGBT advocacy side came out and so I worked with her to help kind of reach out to the LGBT community uh, to help them engage with her campaign. Uh, at the end of the day, she wasn't successful, uh, but she really appreciated the work that I did. And so she took my name back to the county legislature um, and, and they recommended uh, that I become part of the commission. And so I was very honored and, 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 and grateful uh, to have been appointed and nominated. And, and my participation on that commission um, has just been an incredible experience for me. And I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to serve the community in this capacity. Well, we're, so. we're, we're, we're grateful for you to be on the commission. Well, you're you're you. a great asset, tremendous asset to the commission, not only with your knowledge of LGBT issues, but also other mm -hmm. um, things that you do outside of that. Right. And uh, just wanted to tell you publicly, thank you for being on the commission and being a professional as you are mm -hmm. and bringing your knowledge and wisdom on the commission where um, the other diversified um, commissioners that we have, um, you bring now 
the puzzle to that, so thank you. Um, thank you. We know that the commission, a little bit about the commission's history for the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we are 15 commissioners appointed by the county legislature. Um, <clears throat> not saying we're all political, mm -hmm. but we, the county legislature is mandated by law to appoint 15 commissioners. And the 15 commissioners is a three three year term. Mm -hmm. And we, again, foster mutual respect amongst community members. We host town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. We do, we um, issue reports and publications mm -hmm. based on uh, alleged discrimination. And also we do workshops at GED, reentry uh, program and things like that in jail. So the commission, we are involved. Right. And this is what we do. Right. Um, so we had, within this last, Two and a half weeks, we did the walk, right. which was very successful. Right. We partnered right, sure. with Union College. Um, but before we close, we're going to talk about our upcoming breakfast. Yes. That is May 16th right. um, at the Glenn Sanders Mansion. Yep. Every year we do uh, the breakfast. This mm -hmm. is our 29th year. Wow. And we basically give back to the community. We recognize mm -hmm. those outstanding residents of Schenectady County who demonstrated human rights and civil rights mm -hmm. um, and their, their contributions to the, to the community. So that's going to be on May 16th. Mm -hmm. We have 25 nominees. Right. So wow, that's incredible. Normally, yearly, we have about 14. Wow. But now this year, as we stated in our goals, mm -hmm. we said in our commission planning meeting, we right. said that our goal this year was to partner, collaborate, and support the community, mm -hmm. be more active in the community. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've done. And then number two, we also said that we wanted to reach um, other goals within our committees. Mm -hmm. So every committee would have to put on an event or right. the public forum to address issues of the, of the community. And mm -hmm. that's what every committee is doing. Mm -hmm. So the, hum the uh, breakfast it went from 14 to 25 nominees, mm -hmm. very diversified. Right. Um, we have in four categories, youth, individual, community group, mm -hmm. and justice. That's either a judge, a law mm -hmm. enforcement agent, or an attorney. And then um, <clears throat> we uh, did an ad, did the ad journal, right. which was really good too. So we're expecting a, a good amount of people. Mm -hmm. uh, yearly, we're about a 150, 130, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now we're expecting about 200. And if people want to find out more information about the breakfast, that's also online? Yep, yep. Uh, our county uh, communications director, Joe, Joe McQueen, okay. will be uh, updating the website. Great. He's updating the website now, so that everyone could go to schenectadycounty.com slash human rights, and all our website information's on there, all our um, breakfast information's on there, and also we're selling tickets for $22. Okay. Uh, contact our office, 518-377-2982, to purchase your ticket, or for the first time, mm -hmm. we have tickets at the door for $25. Cool. So the commission is busy, but we're in the community for the community. Yeah. And our motto is respect and protect rights for everybody. So we don't discriminate, we just embrace and we do the mandate that we have legislated by law. So thank you for coming, Chad. Thank you so much Chad for Chad Putnam, me. the LGBT committee. I'm Angelica Morris, chair of the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission, and thank you for uh, following us. And hopefully, we'll see you at the breakfast, April uh, May sixteenth, two thousand twelve, at seven a.m. at Glenn Sanders Mansion. Thank you.